Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is talk to you about my favorite subline text packages and settings. Now these make a huge difference. They make it much more productive and easier to work in subline text. And they also do keep the minimalistic feel and look of the editor. So I've made sure that when I've installed these for myself that I haven't gotten rid of that and I haven't completely changed subline. And you notice here that my editor may look a little bit different than yours, but it's nothing major. And in fact, the features are very subtle, but they do make a big difference. Now the features I'm gonna show you how to add here are first, sidebar enhancement. So this is a big one. Uh, by default, su uh, Sublime Text does not actually let you have all of these options and move files around, delete, and rename them from the editor. So that means you need to leave the editor and then come back. With this, you never have to leave the editor when you're actually dealing with the files. Now, the next feature is the ability to actually run code right in the editor. So to hit Control B, that's the shortcut. You can change that if you want and actually see your code script and run it down here. And then you can hit Escape and you can get out of that window. Then we also have the look of the editors. You can see this nice font. In my opinion, this is my favorite font that I've ever used in any code editor. I'll show you how we can change the theme and setting so it looks like this. And then finally, there's a few other packages which we'll get to. One of them is this GitHub package. And you can see that in the top left hand corner of my screen, it's showing a little green icon here. And if you hover over, it tells us the status of this uh, related to the GitHub repository. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how we can add all of these features. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to change the theme and color of the editor. So to do that, we're going to go to preferences. And then from here, we can select color scheme or theme. So color scheme will actually allow us to pick between a few different color presets here. We can see the one that I'm using is Minoke or something like that, but you can click on 16 and you can change it to that, or you can go ahead and change it to whatever else you want. So I'll leave mine on that, but that's how you change the color theme. Now, what we can also do is change the theme. Now the theme doesn't change very much, but you'll notice that if I go to adaptive, that actually makes the entire thing dark, which some of you may prefer. But of course, I'm going to go back to what I was using before, which was this default. Now, in terms of font, if you want to modify the size of the font, um, this is fairly easy to do. You need to hold control on your keyboard. And then from there, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll in or scroll out and zoom in and zoom out. Or you can use the plus or minus keys on your keyboard. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is actually build your code and execute it from the subline text window. So being able to do something like this. Now notice I have a while loop here and I've actually added a custom key extension or key bind here that allows me to break out of this. So by default, one of the issues with running code in subline is that you actually can't stop manually executing the code. You could hit escape to exit out of this window, but it doesn't stop executing the Python process in this case, because I'm using Python. So we need a way to actually stop the build. So we have to add in that key bind, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. So the first thing you're going to want to do to run your code is see if you can already do this. So try hitting control B. And if you hit control B on your keyboard and it brings up a window like this, then you know that you're good to go and you can actually run your code. All you have to do is add the extension. Now, for some reason that's not working, what you can do is go to tools, build system, and you can select either automatic or the specific language that you actually want to build with. So in this case, I've selected Python, but I was leaving it on automatic. And because this is a dot pi extension, it will actually run my default Python interpreter for me. Now, the only issue with this is this is going to use your default build system for any interpreter, any compiler, whatever the default one would be on your system. That's what subline text will run. So in my case, I have many Python interpreters and I want to run a specific one. So to do that, I won't show you precisely, but you have to do something with a new build system. So if you have a specific compiler or interpreter you want to run, click on new build system. And from here, there's some specific syntax you can put in here to dictate where you actually want to look for the compiler or the interpreter. Now, I'm not going to be showing you how to do this here just because this is very specific based on what language you're using, uh, what compiler, what interpreter and all of that and where that is. But there is a way by clicking on new build system that you can select exactly which interpreter or compiler you want to run. And I'll leave it to you guys to look that up. I just figured I'd mention that. Okay, so now that we have the build system up and working, what we need to do is actually add that keyboard shortcut to stop running the code. So to do that, we're going to go to preferences, key bindings, and then we simply need to add the code that I have on the right hand side of my screen to what yours will likely be an empty list. 
So this is actually where you can define your own key bindings and you can change any of the key bindings from the default bindings. So in this case, you can see these are all of the defaults and any key bind that you add here will override any default key binds. So you want to make sure that the key bind you're adding here is does not already exist unless you don't care about overriding that. An example for me was I originally made this control C to cancel the build. And when I did that, my copy command stopped working in subline text. So what you really want to do is add something like control alt C, and that will be the command that we use to exit the build. So I'll leave this in the description for you to copy in. Feel free to change the key bind to what you'd like, but notice that we go keys. We put a list of the keys that we need to press for the shortcut, what the command is, which in this case is cancel build. So you can add your own. And again, yours will likely be an empty list. Just add this dictionary inside of here and we'll be good to go. So now that we have that, I can actually go ahead and hit save. So control S and then quit. We may need to restart subline text, but then we'll be able to use that shortcut to cancel the build, which in my case was control alt C. What I'm going to show you now is how we can actually install some add-ins slash packages to subline text. Now that's what's going to allow us to do these sidebar enhancements to get this GitHub kind of stuff going on. And I'm going to show you the exact packages that I use and you can pick which ones you want to install. So the first thing we need to do when we're going to be dealing with packages is we actually need to install something called package control. Now package control is just our way in subline text of dealing with packages and managing them. Now, fortunately, this is really easy to install. We don't actually have to leave subline text to do this. What we have to do is go to tools and then there actually might be a tool inside of tools here for you that says install package control. If you see that hit it, but if for some reason you're not seeing that go to command palette, start typing install package and you should see a tool that says install package control. Now this is going to look different on my screen than yours because I already have this installed, but it should pop up here. So if you start typing install package, you should see something that says install package control, select that and then hit enter. Now, if that doesn't work for you, I've actually had this link up on the right hand side of my screen, and this shows you how to do the manual installation of package control. So I'll put that link in the description and you guys can follow along with that. If for some reason you couldn't install it with this kind of shortcut way. So once we have that and we have package uh, control installed, we can start using it. Now you might need to reboot your sub uh, your subline for this to work. So just restart the window. But once you've done that, there's two ways that you can access package control. The first way is by going to tools, command palette, and then starting to type package control like that. And you'll see that a bunch of different options pa uh, pop up. The other way is to go to preferences and then hit package control, which is kind of the default tool here. Now you notice all that does for you is just boot up a command palette with package control already typed in, but here you'll be able to see a bunch of the different options for packages. So I actually clicked on, I think browse packages or search packages, and you can see that there's a whole different list of packages that you can use. Now I personally don't really use any of these. I'll show you the ones that I'm using, but just note that you can go to packagecontrol.io and you can look at the top packages and very easily install them with the method I'm about to show you. So go to preferences, go back to package control. And then all we're going to do is at least for me, I'm going to go to list packages and I'll show you the ones that I have. So here you can see, I only have a few. I haven't gone crazy. As I mentioned, I have Git, Git gutter, kite subline package control, which you'll have sidebar enhancements, and then Unicode character highlighter and Unicode character insert. Now I don't remember actually installing these two Unicode ones. So I feel like they might come by default, but I know that hundred percent I installed sidebar enhancements and all of these other plugins. So kite subline, Git gutter and Git. Now Git, what this allows you to do is it just adds some features to do with GitHub. So in this case, it shows us these icons here. It'll tell us if something is staged, if it's been committed, if there's a new like pull request or something that we can do. And I believe it gives us some options in this sidebar here. So open Git repository uh, and, and some settings like that. Now what Git gutter does will actually show you any commits and history in the gutter of this thing. So if you look at where the line numbers are, the thing to the left is called the gutter. And you'll actually see some like little logos, icons uh, and stuff here. Now, unfortunately, since this isn't like a proper Git repository, I can't show you, uh, but it will. You will notice this if you have a Git repository, it will show you some meaningful things in the gutter here. Kite subline, um, you can't actually install kite directly from the package control, I believe. But what this is, is a kind of enhanced autocomplete for Python. If you want to check them out, it's called kite.com. You install it from their website and will automatically add it to subline text. And then finally, there's sidebar enhancements. So those are the ones that I use to install them is really easy. You probably already figured it out. You go to package control, 
you click on install package, it will bring up this big list of packages, just start, start typing the ones that you want. And then you can pick that one. So in this case, since I already have these plugins installed, you won't, I won't be able to see them here. But if you start typing sidebar enhancements, that will pop up, you can install that. And I promise you, you won't regret installing that package. Now, the other ones that I had were to do with GitHub. There's a bunch of different GitHub plugins you can try. So Git tools, Git ignore, Git Moji. Um, and there's, you know, I think thousands of plugins for subline text. So hopefully this kind of opens up the possibilities for you. And now you know how to customize your subline text editor. So with that being said, that's pretty much all the settings and features I wanted to show you. I know this wasn't an extremely detailed video and I didn't show you a ton of things, but hopefully at least I introduced you to some new concepts and subline text. And now you know how to customize your editor and make it your own. Now, the last trick I'll leave you off with is to go into full screen mode. Like I'm in right now, you press the F11 key. That's if you're on windows, if I believe on, if you're on Mac, you'll have to hit function F11 or something like that, but that's useful. I use that all the time. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and I will see you in another YouTube video.